Hey, I'm Ross Bell, uh, the Executive Director of the New Zealand Drug Foundation. So like many kind of uh, drug trusts, we're a national organisation. We, we do a bit of policy, we do a bit of service delivery. And um, our underlying philosophies, like all good people, is around harm minimisation, harm reduction, human rights, social justice. Um, and uh, yeah, we do a bit of fun work in New Zealand. One of the things that people may have seen is, you know, New Zealand's embarked on this bold new experiment to, to create a, to, to move away from prohibition and to create a, a model of regulation over all of these new psychoactive substances, you know, otherwise known as, as legal highs. And it's kind of right that New Zealand is um, the country that's doing this, that's first in the world, because we kind of, have this claim to fame that we were the first country to create these, to cook these things up in the first place. So, you know, the first drug that hit the market about 11 or 12 years ago was benzylpiprazine. It was un unheard of, no one knew what it was, but, um, but it could make its way onto the market um, for the pure, for the simple fact that um, it wasn't a chemical listed in our Misuse of Drugs Act and so the, the manufacturers behind this product figured out that if it wasn't illegal, by, nef by definition it should be legal. So very quickly the product hit the market, um, uh, and with, with being sold with no control, so there was no age restrictions, no health warnings, you know, all of the stuff that other countries have, have seen. Um, and, and for New Zealand it was sold from corner stores and so you could rock on up into these shops, buy your lollies, your sweets, your chips and your legal highs and um, you know that situation of having kind of uncontrolled and unregulated market started you know getting communities quite concerned and then obviously the media got involved and um, and then some adverse reports started being found and, and, and attributed to this product. So um, long story short what the government um, first sought to do was to ban it you know like like all like all good uh, governments let's ban this thing problem solved well no the problem wasn't solved as we've all experienced that drug leaves the market and very quickly a new one takes its place and so New Zealand has experienced the same kind of merry-go-round that lots of other governments have had so what's happened in New Zealand is, is our government has simply run out of patience. It says, no, we're going to you know, stop the merry-go-round. We're no longer going to play this game. What they've said to the industry is, um, if you can prove to us, before these products go on the market, if you can prove to us that these products are low risk, um, and here's some criteria by which this will be measured, and here are the tests that you have to go through to, 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 to prove that. If you can prove that, then we will let you sell your product and make your profits and all of those things, um, but, we will let, but they will be sold under very tight controls. So there's a whole lot of regulations that, that are going to sit over this thing. Some real basic ones are the you know, age limits, no advertising, mandatory health warnings, mandatory labelling, there'll be dosage limits, childproof containers, so all of that kind of stuff. Um, and so I guess what we're hoping, and obviously what the government is hoping, that, that this set of regulations is going to give the government greater control over these products than the current or the, the old system did. Um, the products that, 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 that's going to be under this new, um, the new laws, are they new products or are they, old, or are they previous products? So the, the, the kind of products that, that might make their way through the system can only be new products or products that aren't uh, scheduled in a Misuse of Drugs Act. So one thing that's really clear at the moment is that if the product, whether it's ecstasy, cannabis, or this old product, BZP, because those things are in our Misuse of Drugs Act, they can't go through the system. So we have to put those to one side. So the kind of products you will see are, the, are any new chemical that gets cooked up. Now, one thing around this is that um, quite a list of previous legal highs have been given a temporary ban. So they're not within the Misuse of Drugs Act, they just have a temporary ban and so 
that full range of products, that full range of substances will be able to make their way through this testing process. Um, and so you, the, the kind of products that we're talking about uh, are, any, are any substances that mimic you know, that are sought, sought to be sort of uh, replacements for ecstasy, speedy drugs like amphetamine, methamphetamine, and of course all of the synthetic cannabis that's on the market. Okay. I think one of the, in terms of bigger drug policy reform questions, I think one of the good things that the New Zealand model highlights is, is the fact that, that politicians have kind of woken up to the fact that the, the tried and true way of, of, you know, let's ban it and hope that it goes away, you know, isn't working. Um, because these products, once banned, can so quickly be replaced, you know, almost instantly, um, it's kind of accelerated, um, the, you know, exposing the failure of, of prohibition. And so, um, you know, the reason New Zealand is doing this is not because we have a reformist government, we actually have a conservative government. They're doing this because they've run out of patience. But I think what it what it means is that you know, for all of all of us, all of those countries that are that have these products, I think it lets us start that conversation, that bigger drug policy conversation about, well, <coughs> oh no, you know, prohibition, the banning isn't working, um, and so we do need to try you know something new. And so maybe the you know the New Zealand experiment with regulation coupled with Washington and Colorado's uh, models of regulation will start giving other countries uh, uh, you know real life examples of, of what you can do and so it could well be you know um, and this is looking a few years into the future it could well be that the New Zealand model works you know where that we get the system of control working properly and so that we might start looking at drugs like ecstasy and cannabis um, and, and saying well maybe regulations will give us better control over those as well. So I think it raises a few interesting you know, points for, for drug policy people.